Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So now comes the fateful time to give this little wrought iron hammer a harden and temper. So we're gonna go ahead and stick the face of the hammer into the fire first and bring it up to a critical temperature as it is the thickest portion of our hammer. And then we will flip it around and we will stick the peen section into the fire and bring it up to a critical temperature. Now, there's gonna be a little bit of shuffling in here. The in that the face should hold critical for quite some time once it gets up hot. And so we're gonna bring that up to temp first. We're gonna bring that up to critical temperature. Then we're gonna flip this thing around, bring that peen up to critical temperature, and then we're gonna go in for our quench. So in this step, in, when you're hardening and tempering hammers like this, if you're doing larger hammers, you need to take and do it in a two-step process. That means you need to harden in one step, and then you need to temper in another step. Uh, in this case, we can get away with a one heat harden and temper because the material is so small. Uh, we'll let the body of the wrought iron end up tempering the faces. Now, this is a little trickier than what you would normally than what you would normally do because it's very time sensitive. You've got to stick, you've got to get the face of the hammer into the quench, get it really cool first, then flip it, quench off that uh, the peen section as fast as you can, and then you've got to take and put a little stone on them and really check them very quickly to make sure make sure that they haven't ran past temper. So this is a very speedy process to do this. Uh, you definitely don't want to dilly-dally around while doing it. With that being said, this can be one of the greatest ways of doing this. Now, if you're not real comfortable with your own hardening and tempering capabilities, then I would harden the tool, make sure that it can skate a file, okay? Make sure it can skate a file, and then go ahead and stick it in your heat treating oven or just your regular oven or convection oven at the house and bring it up to whatever the material is that you're working with. For a 1095, you're gonna to wanna to be somewhere around the 350 to 400 degree range for a temper on a hammer. And so you'll wanna keep that in mind as you're bringing it up to, uh, you, you know, once you put it in the oven, you'll just set that and then let it temper for about two hours. Let it sit at that for about two hours. Now at every stage of this game, you wanna bring the piece up to temp slowly. We do not want to get grain growth or weird grain growth. Um, we do not want this to stress the material, us bringing this up to critical temperature. We don't wanna stress the material at this point. We just wanna bring the whole piece up to a nice even temperature, nice and slowly. So I will go ahead and come out of here it's almost up to critical, the peen is. This 1095 does not take long to get to its critical temperature. And uh, so we will do that and I'll be over with you at the quench tank. So I have this piece up nice and hot. It's at its critical temperature. I'm gonna stop the blower from turning. I've got my stone here. It's a little sharpening stone. I'm going to grab the piece by the side, by the side of it, and we're going to quench the face first. So we're going to quench that up to about the eye, and before our end cools off too much, we're going to go ahead and quench that off, up to about the eye, and now we're going to go ahead and just use that stone to polish the face a little bit. So we can see that temper color run. I'm gonna make sure that's nice and cool, stays nice and cool. And I'm already there at a purple. So that's nice and hard. Now you want a purple temper on this because this is gonna be engaging material. You do not need, it is going to be engaging hot material. You do not need it as hard as, say, chasing tools 
and things like that. Now I know that was a bit anticlimactic, but we were focusing on getting that done. So yeah, so we got a nice purple uh, on that face and a nice purple on that face as well. And a good way of checking it is we'll see if we can skate a file on this. So I'll go ahead and grab a little file over here. Now usually I don't check it with a new file. Yep, it skates. That's what we want. A nice skatable thing. Now you'll see it cleaning off the scale a little bit, but the file just skates right off. That's what we're wanting still. Uh, it's going to be a little softer than what it would be at a fully hardened state, and ideally that's what we want. So now I'll go ahead and get this cleaned up with a little bit of sandpaper, take my time, and just sand this off, sand some of this scale back off of here, and then let's give this thing an etch and see how pretty it comes out. Okie doke, ladies and gentlemen. Now it's time for the etch. I got it all cleaned up with some sandpaper. Nice and shiny. This is a little 240 grit sandpaper. Hand sanded. Let's go in for the etch. So I find it nice if you just roll it around a little bit. You know, you don't want to you don't want to get trapped in one spot. I like it if you can move it around just to fuzz. So here we go. I'm sorry if I'm talking a little close to the microphone. One other thing to point out here, there's a lot of vapors that are coming off of here. Now I'm keeping my face far back, but you need to do this in a well ventilated area. Do it outside if you can. Use a good strong fan to blow across you. Um, you don't want any of this stuff to come near you. Um, you do not want to breathe it in. Give me a second. This right here is probably the most dangerous thing I've done in a while because it's chemicals. You do not want to mess around with chemicals, man. There we go. I got a fan blowing on it, blowing that away from my head area. You do not want to mess with chemicals. Messing with chemicals is a very bad, 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 bad thing. So don't do that. You can keep from it. Just a few minutes in the etch. It's already starting to do some etching. We're going to go ahead and leave that in there for a few minutes. And I'll come back with you after uh, once we need to move it from there to here. Should only take about five to ten minutes tops. Okay, now we're going to come up out of the etch. And we're going to put it in the neutralizing bath. So you want this neutralizing bath to be pretty uh, stirred up. And we'll let it sit there for a few minutes. Um, while you do this, hopefully you guys can see how much you guys can see how much is coming off of that jar. That's a good bit there. So like I said, do this outside if you can. Um, I definitely won't be doing this again for a video for anybody because I'll just do it outside and whatnot. Now one of the things I'd like to point out too, you also don't see me wearing gloves. Bad ideal. Make sure you wear gloves with this stuff. I'm not getting my hands anywhere near it, but you need to wear protective equipment. And a respirator would be advisable. Alright, I'll come back with you after this is uh, done neutralizing and we'll take a peek of it. Okie doke everybody, here you can see um, this was with a light etch of about 10 minutes and this is a really fine grain wrought iron that I made this hammer from so you're not going to see a lot of that big wood grain right off the bat. You can see a little bit of it up here on top and a couple little striations. Um, but a really fine grain wrought iron, you'll have to look really, really close. And you can see it a little bit there flowing. One of the biggest things I want you to take note of is this right here. If you look right in here, you can see the carbon migration lines. And just ahead of that, 
just ahead of that, there's a slight silverish look to it. Um, and that is the point of fusion. So, you know, you can see that. So you get the point of fusion and then just a little bit past that, you get that carbon migration just a bit into the wrought iron. And that's what creates them little dark lines there, uh, to the best of my knowledge. Now, uh, I could be completely wrong or told I'm wrong on that. Uh, but from what I have learned, that's what that is. Now, you can see how nice, how this is a dissimilar steel. These are 1095 faces. And this is really neat because it shows you how I welded this together. So this back here was a bird's mouth weld, of course. And then up here was just a butt weld, or just welding the face on flat to this piece before I did all the forming. Now, if you look back here, it's a little harder to distinguish. That is because there was more wrought iron that came up over this and kind of lapped up to the edge. So technically that still runs right down through there, but since it had a little skim over of wrought iron onto it, uh, you know, it doesn't look as pronounced as what that line does there. So that's it for today. I hope you all enjoyed this. Um, you know, I'll try to take in like I said, I'm going to be finishing this up in a live stream. I'll put a link to the video right up here, and I'll put the link to all videos surrounding this in the descriptions down below. So again, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it once again, and as always, God bless you, and we will catch you on the next one.